Hi, I'm Travis Green, the Director of Product Marketing at Microfocus for our ITOM products. And I'd like to take a few moments to talk to you about how to cut your cloud cost using the FinOps discipline. Now, in early December, AWS had their reInvent conference, and there was an article that CNBC published that week that said, Amazon's cloud unit faces cost-sensitive customers as economic fears mount. And, and I think this article goes to the heart of the challenges that the industry is starting to face as there's more scrutiny around what, what the spend in the cloud looks like. We should start by acknowledging that the cloud by design pushes procurement to the edge, and that normally means developers. Cloud infrastructure, it fuels agility, so it's faster, it's more flexible, than the traditional on-prem resources. It's also elastic. So that's both on the capacity side and on the cost side, which is a benefit to both the developers and the business. So there is a reasonable expectation that the more it's consumed, the more business value it provides. But like all technologies, there's a hangover after the euphoria of the initial deployment. And that pendulum is swinging towards more governance. Why is that? Well, there are surveys that indicate that almost a third of cloud spend is wasted. And worse, regardless of how optimal the cloud spend, most CIOs don't think that the shift to cloud has yet achieved the intended business benefit. As anecdotal evidence, I'd like to share an embarrassing story that you might relate to. We at Microfocus are an independent software vendor and we have thousands of developers. So we use a lot of cloud computing ourselves to support our software and SaaS offerings. About two years ago, we had a developer who wanted to take some initiative and decided to deploy Jenkins on AWS on his own. The problem was that he wrongly configured internet access to it and it was hacked. Now that instance wound up costing us around $100,000 in unplanned uptime. And I like to use that phrase unplanned uptime because in operations, we tend to think of unplanned downtime as unwanted, but when it comes to cloud cost optimization, we really need to think in terms of unplanned uptime. Now, we use a tool from a large virtual machine vendor whose name I'll refrain from using at this point, but it told us where we were spending on cloud and, and maybe overspending as well. It, it did a reasonable job of that, but it couldn't prevent the inefficiency of the scenario that I just described to you and a number of other scenarios that we're challenged with. So that led us to trying to figure out a way to put guardrails around our cloud consumption. And we'll talk about that in more detail later. So if we are going to try to optimize our cloud cost, we need to understand what is driving cloud waste. And there are three categories from our experience that I'd like to share with you. First is with all the excitement of moving to cloud, visibility into spend has been an afterthought in many organizations. We really don't know who's spending on what, and without that accountability for the developers who are normally graded on things like the speed of their release cycles, maybe lines of code written, um, it's just not in their, in their incentives to think in terms of ROI on their work. And, even if you are doing a good job of collecting the spend data, it's difficult to forecast because we don't really know what sort of seasonal spikes or volatility is really at work. Second, there's also the issue of trying to optimize usage and rates. The biggest example is where do you draw the line on reserved instances? And that can be a tricky thing if you have a very large scale in deciding how much do you invest in on-demand and how much do you actually use the, the cost savings that can be applied from reserved instances, but that commits you as well to a certain amount of compute power. And the third category is really about that procurement happening at the edge. If we give developers a license to consume at their heart's content, then that's likely what they're going to do. But in one sense, it is a good thing that they're innovating faster, that they are investing in cloud, but a lack of governance brings with it costs and security implications that also cannot be ignored. The good news is that there is a group of people thinking about and addressing this problem. 
The FinOps Foundation, which you can find at finops.org, has some best practices for you, but let's take a little closer look at what the FinOps organization, what FinOps Foundation has in store for you. So what is Cloud FinOps? It's the practice of bringing about a cultural change to cloud consumption. At its core, FinOps enables engineering and operations and business teams to make trade-offs between speed and cost and quality in their cloud architecture and investment decisions. It's about driving collaboration between those teams. It's not about one FinOps group who is going to take their hammer of policy compliance and force the rest of the company to behave in a certain way. It does require that cultural change and for buy-in across all of the stakeholders involved in cloud spend. But FinOps is not just about optimizing the spends, and let's take a closer look at why that's the case. It's also about driving revenue growth. Now, FinOps is all about enabling that cross-functional conversation about where to invest and when, but it's important to remember that sometimes a business will decide to tighten a belt, and sometimes it will decide to invest more. But now the teams know why they're making those decisions, and they understand the business impact of the cloud infrastructure and the applications that are being provisioned on it, what that's providing to the business. Going a little bit deeper, FinOps consists of six principles. Collaboration and ownership, which we've already talked about some. A need for a centralized team to drive adoption, which is still a critical component, even though we're talking about a culture change. You're gonna need somebody to champion the changes that need to happen. You'll also need reporting that's accessible and timely for all of those various stakeholders. And that reporting is gonna look a little different depending on who you are in that organization. There's also a business focus for decision-making. It's not just about cost cutting either. It's what business value is being presented as a result of the investment. And an understanding and leveraging of the benefits of cloud, especially the variable cost model, because that's a great benefit of the cloud. It's elastic, it goes up and down, but how can we take best advantage of that? Now, when we talk about collaboration, we should be specific about who should be collaborating. And FinOps defines that as the FinOps practitioners, who are those champions that we talked about, the executive leadership, but different from executives, are business or product owners, and they're the ones who are gonna really be able to tell you what is the value of the service that's being provided. Finance and procurement will also need to be included because they're the ones that are tracking the expenses, they're tracking the uh, budgets and, and the, the course to budget, but the procurement people are also working with the cloud providers to try to negotiate various rates and commitments. And then finally, of course, the engineering and operations teams who are implementing the, the cloud infrastructure in the first place. We also need to understand the three phases of FinOps. And I'd like to use those three phases to discuss in more detail about an approach to FinOps that we recommend. Those three phases are inform, optimize, and operate. It might be tempting to think of these as a maturity model that you would implement one after the other, but in order to have an effective FinOps practice, you really need to address all three. So let's look at each in more detail. The first phase in the FinOps journey is inform. This provides visibility, allocation, benchmarking, budgeting, and forecasting. The on-demand and elastic nature of the cloud, along with customized pricing and discounts, makes it necessary for accurate and timely visibility for intelligent decisions. Accurate allocation of cloud spend based on tags and accounts or business mappings enable accurate chargeback and showback. Business and financial stakeholders also want to ensure they are driving ROI while staying within budget and accurately forecasting spend. So putting that all together, you're gonna to need some reporting across those various demands in order to make sure that you're informed about the decisions that need to be made. Once organizations and teams are informed, they need to optimize their cloud footprint. Cloud providers do offer multiple levers that you can optimize here, but on-demand capacity is typically the most expensive. So the cloud providers 
offer discounts for commitments, which typically involves complex calculations for making reservations. Those are known as reserved instances or for Google Cloud committed use discounts. In addition, teams and organizations can optimize the environment by right sizing and automating the shutdown of any wasteful resources. Finally, in the operate phase, organizations start to continuously evaluate business objectives and the metrics they're tracking against those objectives, things like speed, quality, and cost. Now, any organizational success is only possible if the organization builds a culture of FinOps, which involves typically a cloud center of excellence built around business, financial, and operational stakeholders who also define the appropriate governance policies and models. But at Microfocus, we think this needs to go even a step farther. As I mentioned earlier, we became very interested in putting in place automated guardrails to prevent overspending and out of policy cloud use after some embarrassing incidents. We couldn't find the right solution, so we added FinOps capabilities to our existing hybrid cloud management solution. So I'd be honored if you'd allow me just a few more minutes to describe what Microfocus can offer to you. So recently we have introduced a new Microfocus FinOps solution. And as I mentioned, it's been built on the shoulders of our hybrid cloud management solution that's been in the marketplace for over a decade. And what we've done is we've tailored to that product to the three phases of the FinOps Foundation's recommendations of inform, optimize, and operate. And we've created the reporting that's going to be necessary to identify cloud overspend, but also put in place those guardrails that I was mentioning before. The Microfocus FinOps solution supports all three phases of FinOps. Beginning with total cloud spend visibility, it can show you who's spending on what and identify an efficient usage like over-provision processing power. It supports showback or chargeback across AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud. And it can alert you when spin limits are breached to minimize the overage. That's also known as an anomaly. Next, it will provide you with automated recommendations of how to optimize your reserved instances. It does that with AI powered savings recommendations, which is critical in any environment that has to deal with a large scale. And then finally, it will help you prevent overspending and out of policy configurations with guardrails for self-service and automation that can shut down workloads during idle periods. Here's an example of the reporting you'll get. It's easy to understand even for the non-technical staff on what the potential savings can be with the recommended changes, but it also includes the details for the technical users so they know how to implement those changes. To summarize the benefits of the Microfocus FinOps solution, it comes down to these three points. You'll be able to uncover uncontrolled cloud costs and be able to use that information to help free up your resources for more innovative funding. You'll be able to take control of your cloud costs, meaning that you won't miss the savings opportunities that can come from things like booking your reserved instances. And finally, you'll be able to keep or maintain control of those costs proactively because you'll be able to put guardrails in place and avoid non-compliant configurations and overspend at times when that cloud infrastructure isn't needed. If you'd like to try it for a limited time, we've made it very simple to just send a request to our product management team and you see the email address right there on the screen, but it's hcm-pm at microfocus.com. And one of the members of that team will get back to you on understanding what exactly you're looking for, and then whether we'll be able to help you and implement uh, a trial period for you to, to check out the software yourself. And if you're not ready to try it out, but you'd like to find out more, you can visit our public webpage you can request a demo. There's also a demo video that you can get to on our webpage. So if you'd like just a, a quick, a few minute tour of the product itself, then that's also available to you. You can read our reports and blogs and so on. So a great resource there for you to explore further. Thanks for taking about 15 minutes to check this out and we hope to hear from you soon.